are now watching The Beach. 2024 has been quite an eventful year for animation already. Mickey Mouse entered the public domain, an entire new Spongebob movie leaked in its entirety, a YouTuber spent 50k on an AMV of has- WAIT JUST A MINUTE?! You're telling me an entire Spongebob movie leaked? I'm sure most weren't even aware a new one was coming. Well guess what? Not only is there a fourth theatrical film slated for next year, but there's in total three spin-off movies in production. Two of them being character-focused, Paramount Plus exclusives. And then, there's a full-on Sandy Cheeks movie being Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. Which, for some reason, is a Netflix exclusive? What's next? Nintendo is gonna make a Mario game exclusive to Xbox? It's crazy having a Spongebob movie exclusive to Netflix. But what's even crazier than that is that the entire Sandy movie was leaked. I don't think we really need to go into it. I mean, I think it's 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 all in the public records. The entire movie was posted on Twitter, and even though it's been taken down, I've seen it. And you can't pull a Mr. Krabs and make me unwatch it. You'd assume that they'd take it down because of copyright. But honestly, maybe Paramount is taking it down because the Sandy movie is truly awful. Soiled it! Soiled it! When you think of awful Spongebob episodes or movies, there are a few categories they fall under. You have the episodes like Spongebob You're Fired and Truth or Square that are designed solely for the purpose of being ratings traps, with sloppy storytelling, extreme filler, or flat out lying to the audience with Truth or Square. That's often the deal with those specials. Then of course, you have the classic bad tropes of Squidward torture episodes and annoying Patrick episodes. Then there are the episodes that feel like the writers were on seaweed. Sometimes, it can be so bad and shocking that it's funny. Like in To Love a Patty where Spongebob dates a Krabby Patty. I can at least be entertained by these kind of episodes. But with the Sandy movie, it's a level of bad I have never seen for Spongebob. It is a new low for the series, and that's saying a lot. The first time you see the movie, you might think it wasn't that bad. You might even think it was mid, but once you let it soak all in like a sponge, its problems become increasingly apparent. So what exactly made the Sandy movie so bad? I wasn't expecting to do a review, but after seeing it, I'm at a loss for words. But I did find them, because here's a complete review and breakdown of Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie, better known as The Bottom of Bikini Bottom. The concept of a Sandy movie is actually not just a decent idea, but a good idea. And for many reasons. For one, Sandy has been known to be underutilized, so it's always nice seeing her in the spotlight, unless it's a flea in her dome. And there's a lot more to Sandy's character compared to other Spongebob characters. She's a figurative fish out of water, she loves karate and extreme sports, and even though the science focus has become a point of flanderization, there's a lot you can do with it to make it interesting. Feral friends completely embraced Sandy's knowledge of science and brought in additional lore by having her work with the French narrator. It was cool, it made sense, and most importantly, it was entertaining. The worst thing a film can be is boring. While the Sandy movie has better writing than Sponge on the Run and has a better, more coherent plot, that doesn't mean it has good writing or a good plot. The main premise is that Bikini Bottom gets scooped up and Sandy and Spongebob need to save the day. That is literally the extent of it. All that happens is Bikini Bottom gets scooped up at the beginning of the movie, and there's no build-up, there's no tension, that's literally all that happens. Sandy and Spongebob then head off to Texas to save Bikini Bottom. They encounter the usual obstacles along the way, and I actually did find the fight with the rattlesnakes to be interesting and pretty cool. It doesn't take long to see why Bikini Bottom got scooped up, because there is a villain in the movie, and this villain and the story behind her is when I knew this was a new low for the series. One of the Sandy movie's claims to fame is showcasing Sandy's family. That's actually a cool idea, but unfortunately, they just appear to appear 
and nothing is ever explained or showcased. They're circus performers, and they hint at a conflict of interest with Sandy pursuing science instead of the circus, but nothing ever happens with it, and the road chase scene, after that, we barely see any of them throughout the rest of the film. So then we get into what Nick decided was important. You don't watch a Sandy movie to learn about her backstory and seeing the family. You watch it to see Wanda Sykes walk in with a death stare that rivals Luigi. There's a major live action focus, even more than Sponge Out of Water. And this is where any semblance of Spongebob or relation to the series completely fades away. It doesn't even feel like Spongebob at this point. With a lot of live action in Spongebob, it still retains what makes the show great, but it doesn't even feel like that here. It feels like amateur YouTube videos from 2007, and there are barely any locations shown except for a science lab. It feels like a bottle episode of a show that takes place in one location, and it's incredibly boring to sit through. The lab should have been the final destination, just like how Shell City was in the first movie. Soiled it! Soiled it! I often see the streaming on demand joke brought up as one of this movie's biggest problems, but the main issue isn't initially apparent. It's something you'll feel after watching it, or at the very least, during the halfway mark. This movie overall feels about as empty and bland as the science lab. There's no comedy, there's not even shock value for the most part. The whole movie feels like it was written by AI and lacks any soul. There's barely any comedy. SpongeBob is supposed to make you laugh, or at the very least entertain you. Even if an episode isn't particularly funny like Enemy in Law, at least it has a good story and it's entertaining. Only one scene stood out, and not in a good way. There is literally a scene where SpongeBob is on land and sniffs cow poop because he doesn't know what it is. What is it with these recent movies having a scene where a beloved character examines and huffs doo-doo? First Pinocchio, now this? In case you're concerned about spoilers, I'd advise clicking away if you care about hearing the motivation behind the villain Tsunami, but it is quite literally one of the most shallow and absurd reasons I have ever seen in a movie. Cause I knew that I'm a gay fish, gay fish. Get this, Tsunami abducted Bikini Bottom because she wanted to find a way to cuddle with fish. Because if she took him out of the water, they die. She goes into great detail about traveling across America to touch fish, including a line that's literally ogling octopi in Orlando. I had to do a double take for that one, considering the obvious. And his name is Orlando. In Orlando. They should have gotten Kanye as a villain. That'd be perfect considering he loves fish sticks, just like Tsunami. Then there's a sort of meta joke about SpongeBob being milked, where Tsunami plans to genetically engineer SpongeBob and friends to breathe air, and then turn them into marketable, copyable pets. If you want a good meta joke about SpongeBob being milked, the Krusty Sponge does it way better. The Sandy movie might seem mid, because it doesn't do anything blatantly awful, for the most part, that is. And even the characters are in character. Sandy was fine, albeit a bit underwhelming, but that's because the plot was underwhelming. Patrick was actually kind of likable and wasn't completely brain dead. Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Plankton retained their personalities, even if they felt a bit generic. At least they have their personalities. I don't even think SpongeBob was awful. He felt stupid and didn't really do anything to further the plot, but he wasn't too annoying. Where you'll instantly be able to tell the Sandy movie is bad is with the animation. Johnny, Johnny. Yes, Papa. Just like Sponge on the Run, it's entirely CGI. But unlike Sponge on the Run, which had beautiful animation, the Sandy movie legitimately looks on par with Johnny Johnny Nursery Rhymes on YouTube. Not quite as bad, but there's no reason why a billion dollar franchise should be putting out something so low effort and cheap looking. Great, now Spongebob is the Pokemon of cartoons. Perhaps Nick needs a Spongebob with guns equivalent to light a fire under their bum. Oh wait, that's already a thing. It won't have a budget of a theatrical film, I get that, but it feels they didn't even try. It's very likely that this movie isn't unfinished, it's just incomplete. 
and it needs to be polished up a bit, because it wasn't supposed to release now. Remember, it got leaked. But there's a scene in the movie that's a flashback scene for Tsunami, and I kid you not, it's an adult Wanda Sykes head photoshopped onto a small body. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it's nightmare-inducingly levels of bad. Considering Camp Coral, I'm assuming the final movie will look on par with that. It looks bad, and unless it's stylized or in a video game, it's best to just keep SpongeBob 2D. If I directed the Sandy movie, here's what I would have done. The plot could still be Sandy needing to save Bikini Bottom, and the circus performer aspect is actually a cool idea. The story could have been Sandy feeling neglected in Bikini Bottom, so she decides she wants a new adventure in life and returns to Texas where she reunites with her family. The family could then argue about how it was a bad idea to live underwater and pursue science when she sort of stuck with the circus, so she becomes a circus performer, and then the story surrounds the obstacles Sandy encounters, being in the circus, and trying to win back the approval of her family. But in the end, science is her true passion, and she combines her knowledge of science with the circus. The family sees it as blasphemous at first, but Sandy develops a high-tech circus that brings in huge audience numbers unlike ever before. Meanwhile in Bikini Bottom, Spongebob and friends miss and realize how much they miss and need Sandy. Bikini Bottom then goes into chaos when all doesn't go well, and Sandy needs to decide whether or not she wants to return to Bikini Bottom or pursue her new life in Texas, or find a compromise. Ditch the Wanda Sykes lab cringe entirely and actually throw in some funny jokes and you have what could have been, at the very least, a decent movie. The general consensus is that the Sandy movie is either bad or mediocre, but it's interesting hearing different takes. My good friend EB the original master has shared his thoughts on the Sandy movie as well, and he's much more positive towards it. If you love Spongebob like I do, he has an entire channel where he reviews Spongebob episodes, so go check out his channel and subscribe to him. Now EB! Did you like the Sandy movie more than you liked Toadette? For starters, the story was really interesting with this evil corporation from above the surface kidnapping the Bikini Bottom citizens and turning them into profitable toys for a water park is a really interesting story for a Spongebob movie. The new characters introduced, such as the rattlesnakes that Spongebob and Sandy encounter and the Cheeks family were a delight to watch, and it was really cool seeing Randy Cheeks for the first time, first being mentioned in the Season 7 episode, Rodeo Days, and Sandy's backstory of her becoming a circus performer and her new abilities to glide around in the air, really interesting stuff. And the animation for this movie can be hit or miss, as some parts of the movie looks pretty good, while other parts looks terrible. But that is to be expected with a Netflix movie, and I think they were probably given a low budget. But either way, the animation is still pretty solid in this movie. Now, I do have a few criticisms with this movie, for example, such as um, the CGI on the villain um, when she revealed her true form. Um, that was a little off. And the animation and the flashback scene, that was awful. Like, I'm going to be honest with you guys, that was just some terrible CGI yeah, they need to go back into the kitchen and cook because that is some bad CGI. And the last point of criticism that I have with this movie is Spongebob's infamous streaming on demand quote. Because, you know, we definitely needed a quote like that in a Spongebob movie to make it dated, right? So in conclusion, Saving Bikini Bottom is a huge improvement over Sponge on the Run in my opinion and is a very good movie overall. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an annoying pink mushroom with pigtails that I have to roast over at my channel, so I'll catch you later. Thank you for your thoughts. We might disagree on the Sandy movie being good, and I actually like Toadette, thank you very much. But in the end, the Sandy movie is a kind of bad that isn't initially apparent. With Sponge on the Run, it's way more blatant. The pacing is about as sloppy as your heartbeat after drinking a bang. It's a ripoff of the first movie and have you seen this snail? And of course, the whole point of the movie just was to be an overly long commercial for Camp Coral just like The Wizard was for Super Mario Bros. 3, but much, much worse. The thing is, the Sandy movie is proof to me that Spongebob is quite literally being wrung out for every last penny. The whole movie feels absolutely soulless, and it feels like it was a project made due to obligation to have a Sandy movie, instead of an idea someone had and a project they wanted to put passion or care into. At least with something like To Love a Patty, yes it's horrible, but you're at least entertained throughout it. And it's clear the writers were having a blast 
even if it's literally about SpongeBob wanting to put his pickle in the buns of a Krabby Patty. All of these SpongeBob spinoffs have absolutely sucked. Camp Coral, absolute garbage. The Patrick Star Show, more like Pee Wee's Crack House. None of these were made with any passion or care, and they were solely made because of money and nothing else. It's like if Mr. Krabs owned Nickelodeon, though at least Mr. Krabs, he'd probably have a little bit of empathy towards the legacy of Hillenburg. I've seen the argument, oh, it's just for kids, you're being too harsh on the Sandy movie. You know what else was for kids? The first Spongebob movie, and Sponge Out of Water, and I guarantee you, if I was a kid, I'd be bored out of my mind watching the Sandy movie. If Nickelodeon wants to continue milking Spongebob, I don't approve of it, and I find it disrespectful, but at the very least, could they get a budget of more than just a chip, a used napkin, and a penny? Perhaps a budget of $50,000 could go a long way. And I know a guy who has you covered. <laughs> I'd say don't even bother watching the Sandy movie. Sadly or unsadly, it's been taken down from Twitter. And if you want new SpongeBob content, just go watch Glorb. He actually has talent and creativity. But anyways, guys, that about wraps it up. And as always, keep calm and dot on. Oh, I'm gonna need to after that flashback scene. <laughs>